In this video, I want to introduce a couple of useful tools. In particular, I want to introduce you to a couple of uh, ways to read in, um, other ways to read in data, how to get help in R, uh, and something called a script file. In a previous video, we used the command line interface. We did things like defining vectors. You know, we would we would display things. We could press the up arrow to get our previous uh, commands. Sometimes when we're doing sort of complicated, uh, complicated manipulations in R, uh, we get carried away. We run a lot of related commands, and we forget which commands worked. So one great way to keep track of this is to use what's called a script file. So how do you get one of those? Well, R has a nice way to get those. You go up here to File, click File, go down to what's called New Script. Now this is going to open up something that looks very much like a notepad editor. Sort of from here on out, I'm going to use script uh, scripts quite a bit to sort of illustrate points and keep a, keep a log of the commands that, uh, that we're running um, on, on these tutorials. One thing I want to talk about is that it's okay to get help in R. Uh, so getting help in R is pretty straightforward can use this help command. So in the previous video we talked about um, the read.csv command. Um, so the read.csv command, maybe, maybe you know that that's the right command to use, but you forgot some of the details. Um, if you want to remember some of the details and see what R has to say about this, well one thing you can do um, is you could type help and say read.csv. Let's say you want to run this command it, from the script. So we're learning a couple of things at once. What, what does the help command do? Well, it gets you help. It tells you, uh, brings you to the help file. The other, the other thing that we're learning here is how do you run a line of code from, uh, from a script? So one thing you can do is you can highlight it. You go to edit, you go to run line or selection run that line and lo and behold here is the help file uh, pulls up a browser window for you and it gives you a whole bunch of information the thing you should take from this is that our help isn't especially useful if it's going to be useful one thing that's most useful most of the time is that down at the bottom it'll give you it, it'll give you an example um, in this case it doesn't give an example um, and in that, I guess that makes my previous video all the more uh, all the more useful when you want to have an example of how to read in data I uh, guess you should just go to my previous video on how to read in data using read.csv one thing that might also be useful and you may have heard through the grapevine that there's a there's a command out there that uh, will read stata files stata has its own extension .dta and if you want to if you want to read uh, read that into Excel that's going to be a pain you have to export it out and you have to have a copy of Stata but suppose you got R because it's free you got it on your home computer and you don't have Stata but you still have a Stata data file and um, you need to read it in and do a few manipulations with it well it turns out this command read.dta is a great command to to get uh, stata, uh, stata command into R. So let's try to read the help file on this. Uh, it says no documentation. And then let me go ahead and interpret what just happened there. It turns out that read.dta is in a special place called a library. This is R jargon. Uh, package is sort of like a set of commands that go together and they're, they're sort of in a folder. It's in a package called foreign. So this read.dta is not in the standard package of commands that, um, that R know, loves and knows when it opens up. If it's already installed, what you need to do is you need to type this command library and then foreign, the name of the library. Oh, you can run this command and now this read.dta is available. So here, let's let's try to run this uh, help.read.dta. To even get help on a command, 
you need to have the library available in R. It works very similarly to how we would uh, how we would work with read.csv. So let's uh, let's read in a data uh, data file. I'm going to read it into something called school.df. Uh, this is a naming convention I use. I try to use a nice informative name. Uh, this is going to be a data set about uh, different individuals at a school. And then what I'm doing is I'm with this .df. It's not really specifying anything special about the object. It's just saying uh, it's part of the name, but it's saying to me uh, that this is a data frame. And so whenever I go to work with it, I, I remember that it's a data frame. So the read.dta command just needs the file path where you have the data. In this case, I've got it in my standard directory under the C drive. I've got my folder R, and I'm going to read that in. It's a stated data file, but it's going to belong to R once I press this command. Now I have a data set, a data file um, called school.df that is part of um, my active environment, and I can play around with that with a whole bunch of different commands. So now let's, now we've done uh, this heavy lifting, we've used kind of a specialized command. Well, let's do some standard things. One thing I haven't note, uh, haven't mentioned here, and you may have wondered uh, what was going on here. When I ran this command, and after this, uh, these double pound signs, I could just put one pound sign, it would have worked too. But after those pound signs, the R didn't read what was going on there. Um, and the reason is that these pound signs, anything that follows a pound sign in R, um, in a line in R, is not read by R as code. Everything that, uh, that that's a comment in R, and, if, and commenting is great practice because it reminds us of uh, what we're doing with the code in plain English. Run this command called mean. Uh, that's going to do exactly what we think it's going to do. It's going to compute the average of this data frame. But wh what does that mean? <laughs> well, what does that mean? Well, it's going to take the average of each variable. And what you'll notice is these uh, variables, county, district, and gr span, well, those are reported as na. Um, and that, that means that something went wrong tried to average something that wasn't a number, it's going to return um, an error message, but it's going to let you know where things went wrong, and it's going to compute the averages of the other variables. So the other thing you'll notice is it's in scientific notation, which is kind of annoying because it's hard to read what's going on there. Uh, a common trick I like to use is to round um, the result that is, or round whatever is giving me scientific notation. Two decimal places ought to work, so let's run this line. So we run that line and all of a sudden it's readable again. Rounding will tend to condense the things down, or uh, condense the numbers down so that you can actually look at them and get a sense for their magnitudes. Don't use round for intermediate calculations though. Um, if you do that, you're going to introduce imprecision. Um, so only do it when you're trying to get a better look at your data. Uh, we could compute something, we could compute the variance of the data frame. Now, this is a little bit interesting. This is even worth typing. This is computing not just the variance of each variable, but the covariance of each variable with the other variables. This is the variance covariance matrix. And whenever you try to take the variance of a vector, um, or a variance of, of more, a data frame with more than one variable, it's going to compute a variance covariance matrix instead of just the variances. If you want just the variances, you could ask for the diagonal, um, and there's a command called diag that will give you the diagonal of this variance covariance matrix. Now let's go ahead and run that just to see what happens. So there we have some variances there, and not surprisingly, um, we can't take averages so of these three variables, so why could we take uh, why, why could we ever take variances? So that's just uh, that's an average squared distance. It's not going to work either. If we just want the summary statistic of a particular variable, we could use the dollar extractor. Maybe I'm interested in read score and I want to return this number here. Uh, I can ask for the variable read score from this school.df. 
and then take the mean of that vector uh, and lo and behold we got our read score uh, well that doesn't look like the same number oh but that's that's also kind of weird because this is the variance and if we actually went and computed the mean again uh, there's there's the right number so six four six fifty four ninety seven that's the same thing as six point five four nine seven times e uh, times ten to the uh, ten to the two that was a successful way to just look at the mean of one of our variables is one thing you might be interested in is I I wanted to create maybe another variable that's not in here but I could get it from some of the variables in here so, for example, I can see at the end of the data set here, there's a reading score and there's a math score. I might be really interested in seeing what the total score on this test is. That might be a nice metric for me to compare the observations. We can just use mathematical manipulation. So, I'm going to define a variable called tote score. And I'm going to make this read score plus math score. And as you can see here, we've got uh, a command that looks just like math, and it says tote score equals this vector plus this vector. Well, let's go ahead and do that and see what ends up happening. Uh, it gave us something. Let's see what tote score looks like. Well, it looks like a vector uh, from 1 to 420. And so this has got the same length as our data frame. And maybe, just maybe, it's going to be part of our data frame. But let's see if, uh, if tote score is among the names of this in this data frame. And it's not. Uh, we just created a variable, but it's not in our data frame. And you know, this is standard and somewhat unfortunate in R. When you create a variable from, um, from elements of a data frame, it doesn't automatically go into that data frame. If you want to make it go into that data frame, um, there's a common trick using the cbind command. So a little explanation of what this is doing. The cbind is binding this matrix with this matrix by the columns. Um, so it's uh, if they have the same number of rows, it's just going to sort of stick them together. Uh, and this turns out to be just the simplest way uh, to so sort of coerce that new variable we created into our data frame object. So let's see what ends up happening. Well, it, it didn't bark at us, so, uh, so nothing fatal happened there. And let's run this names uh, school.df, see what the names are now. And lo and behold, we didn't even need to rename the new vector that we appended to our data frame. Uh, it inherited the name that it was already given in R. So now, as a part of our data frame, we have a new variable that we created. It turns out that for things like running regressions, this is going to be sort of the most useful thing to, ha to do. It's going to be the the simplest way to make sure that we have access to that variable when uh, when we want to use it um, for sort of standard econometric applications. So uh, you'll, you'll see this in future tutorials, but uh, sort of for right now, uh, just notice that this is going to be something that you're going to do more than once uh, in the future. Uh, wouldn't, I wouldn't spend time on a tu in a tutorial unless this was something I found incredibly useful. Uh, got used to some computing some summary statistics I've introduced you to this really cool command on uh, how to read data in if it's in stata format I showed you how to get help um, and unfortunately ours help isn't much help until you you can help yourself anyway and got you used to the script file um, so hopefully uh, hopefully this was a helpful introduction to these topics. Uh, I'll pick up on some more topics the next time that I bring, uh, I, I bring my uh, screen capture software to bear on this. And um, until next time, uh, keep learning R.